In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to do masking in the free video editor shotcut. Hello everyone, I am Budget Recording, and on this channel I try and help make your video look better and audio sound better in videos such as these. In this video, as I just mentioned, I'm going to be helping you figure out how to use the masking filter in shotcut. It is, honestly, in my opinion, it is one of the most versatile filters in any editor, and the way it's done in shotcut is a little confusing at first, but once you figure out how to use it, it's quite simple actually. So to start with, the most basic things you need is mask, simple shape, and mask apply as well as some effect in the middle. The way you add uh, masks, the way I do it at least is just search mask, not that mask, and then you come up with three of them. I'm going to be showing you how to use these three um, but not the 360 equi rectangular mask. Uh, that's for 360 degree video, which I do not have any of. And uh, I'm guessing it applies pretty well based off what I'm going to show you. From uh, I already have all the effects loaded, so I'm just going to hit this X to not select any, but you can select whatever fits your needs the most. So the first one I'm going to show you is the simple shape and in order for you to be able to see what's happening, uh, you also have to have an apply and then some effect in the middle or filter in the middle. So the effect filter I'm going to be using is brightness. I have it set to zero just so it makes everything pitch black and then it's really easy for you to tell. And then I'll show you a more real world situ way to use it. So you go into the simple shape. It needs to be active in order for it to do anything. But as you can see, it is just a black box up above. Um, so then when I go here, I have all the different options. Uh, you can switch to these. Uh, but I think the main one you do you would use is overwrite. You can switch the shapes. I'll show you uh, one other one, but triangle is triangle, of course. Stuff like that. It's, that part's self-explanatory. Horizontal is the horizontal positioning. Um, so if I bring the width the way down, then you can see it sliding around as I move the slider. Um, and then you can just reset it that way. I'm just going to make it full width again. And then height, it increases both sides, um, but vertical is how you move it up and down. So now you can see that height affects both sides. Um, Go back to that and up to there. And then uh, rotation. Pretty obvious to see what that's doing. And then softness uh, determines how abrupt the start of the mask is. And just the fade so you don't end up with a jarring line like this. It can just fade in. That's a very aggressive fade. You would probably want something more like that I would think uh, but just for demonstration purposes I'm gonna leave the softness at 0% for this um, the next one is another simple shape it's an ellipse all the same controls uh, but this of course looks different uh, so you can make it a circle unfortunately these aren't the same if you had a one-to-one -one video I'm guessing these would be the same but this is not one to one. I believe that's 16 by nine. So there's that. And then I'm going to go back up to there. And then uh, softness again, all the same things. And you can always make presets and keyframe this. So if you want the mask to be moving down with the video, you can always keyframe that, which if you would like me to, I will do a tutorial for next. Um, unfortunately, what you can't do is two masks at the same time. Uh, currently, the ellipse is on top, and that's the only one that comes through. If I switch the order, then it's just the rectangle. Um, so that's what the simple shapes do. Now for the much more useful things uh, from file. So this is just what you will get as soon as you select from file. Um, and, and in order to actually see how useful it is, 
uh, you want to probably go to custom, but there's a bunch of presets here. Uh, so in custom, uh, I've got a file here with all the, with a preset for all of, or I took this image, modified it in GIMP uh, to make certain parts black. So like the sky, uh, I switched to black. Everything else was white. And then the mask applies where the image that it grabbed here is black. So if you have a completely black image, it will apply it to the entire image. If the left half is black, then of the source image, then the mask will apply on the left half of the screen. I hope that made sense. Uh, but another cool thing you can do is if the channel is set to brightness, you can uh, use different shades of gray or pretty much whatever color. And depending on how bright it is, it applies more of the mask. Like you can see, I just passed a threshold and then it changed that. Uh, so right now, the threshold is low enough that the box right here doesn't appear, but as soon as you turn threshold off, it switches it to uh, be the reverse. You can also invert it so it's exactly reverse. Uh, and then softness, it depends. It just makes it lighter. And then as soon as that one's back, um, the lighter the source image is at the spot, then the less it applies the mask. With depending on softness. And then I think the coolest part of this is when you switch to a video. You can use a video source. I just have a WebM file. And then when I play this, the mask switches in the middle. So this is a way you can keyframe the custom elements to it. So you could this would take a long time, but it is possible. You could uh, import this into uh, like GIMP or Photoshop frame by frame and figure out the spot you want to mask and then apply the mask that way with a video. And so for a real world situation, uh, you could like apply a LUT, which I went over in my previous video, top left corner if you want to watch it. But then you can see how the color grade from the LUT switches positions depending on what part of the video you're watching. Unfortunately, the biggest limitation with this is you can only have one mask per filter stack. So like if I enabled this, I can't even add another apply to get both masks in. You can only have one filter, which is kind of annoying, but it's just a limitation you're going to have to work around. It's something that comes with pretty much all free software. There's always limitations. But that is a intro to masking in the video editor shotcut. I hope you enjoyed. Make sure you subscribe if you want more content just like this. Uh, smash like and I will see you next time.